Native Americans chase after the Sandman for keeping the white man's books. The Sandman outruns the horses and willingly allows himself to get kicked onto some nearby rocks. A cryptic hand emanates from the Sandman, which allows him to escape his captors. Upon reaching the top, the Sandman is whipped by his sister. Though the two dislike the white man, Sandman views their writings as useful in reclaiming their land. He shows her a newspaper advertising the Steel Ball Run, with a prize money of $50 million. Spectators and participants are all gathering for the Steel Ball Run. After telling his assistants to handle the logistical components of the race, Stephen Steele, the promoter, leaps into Lucy's arms, thinking the worst will happen. At a press conference, Stephen says the race will begin on the Pacific San Diego beach, ending in New York, making this a trek of 6,000 kilometers, all on horseback. The applicants must be 16 and submit a $1,200 participation fee. Also, any type of machine is allowed, even a thing called an automobile. The exchange of horses is prohibited, and the course will enter wastelands without roads. Furthermore, participants may bring weapons for personal safety. Some of the notable contestants are a cowboy Tim, Ermed, the camel rider, Dot Han, a descendant of Genghis Khan, and Diego Brando from England, otherwise known as Dio. A man named Gyro Zeppoli joins the race, displaying his gold teeth that read, Go Go Zeppoli. A man touches Zeppeli's steel ball, forcing him to his knees. Zeppeli then recovers the $20 the man swiped so he can enter the race. Meanwhile, Poco Loco lazes about as his grandfather plows the fields. He thusly decides to enter the race to help his grandfather build a barn. The thief from before goads Gyro with a gun, but is held down by local sheriffs. He then says he'll enter the race just to stall Gyro. If you're done talking, give him the gun back. Pick it up, but if you do, that'll be the sign, if you're really going to bother me. Though he hesitates, the thief distracts Gyro and picks up the gun, but Gyro chucks the ball flush into the man's shoulder. The ball returns to Gyro, leaving a nasty wound on the man. You bastard! The man accidentally shoots himself in the face. Afterwards, a small boy in a wheelchair chases after the mysterious steel ball. Once he touches it, his legs begin to move. Turns out, this story is about the boy in the wheelchair, Johnny Joestar, and his growth from adolescence to adulthood. As a five-year-old child, Johnny was a genius horse rider, who was often called Jojo. After winning the Kentucky Derby at 16, he begins dating a millionaire daughter. While dating, the girl implores Jojo to cut to the front of the line at a play, but a small man calls him out. Jojo then bribes some guards and they escort him away. He returns, however, shooting Jojo in the back. What the hell did you do? Jojo wakes up in a hospital with no nurse taking care of him. An objectionable man abuses Jojo, telling him that everyone has abandoned him now since he's paralyzed from the waist down. Back in the current timeline, Jojo is in disbelief that his legs began to move again. Wait, I need to know, what did you just do to me? Jairo brushes off the incident as a bodily reflex galloping away from Jojo. Not easily deterred, Jojo jettisons his wheelchair toward the steel ball, but Gyro prevents this from happening. He brushes off the kid and rides off, yet Jojo remains steadfast in finding out the secrets of the steel ball. Jojo desperately attempts to ride a horse in hopes of joining the steel ball run. The boy fails miserably. Gyro watches on, saying that if he could ride the horse, he'd go beyond any human. Sandman enters the race by handing over an emerald keepsake from his parents. He also claims he'll cross the continent on foot alone. The trophy is placed inside a block of ice from the South Pole that will melt when the winner reaches the finish line. The contestants prepare for the start of the race as Jojo is dragged in by his horse. Gyro then says, You already found the answer. If you have the will to get on the horse, why don't you? And with this, the steel ball run finally begins. There are nine stages in total, and the winner of each stage will receive prize money and a special bonus. Winner of the first stage, which is a sprint race, will receive a one hour time bonus. Gyro immediately races out to a lead, leaving everyone in his dust. A collision occurs when the other horses get agitated. Dio begins closing the gap on Gyro, as her mid Avdal charges the other competitors. Gyro shoots his steel ball forward. Avdal lunges in to take out Gyro, but Gyro ducks the blow, 
forcing the camel riding man into some cacti. The steel ball returns to Gyro, with Avdal being eliminated from the race. Jojo wonders what happened, as Gyro relishes the opportunity of receiving a time bonus. Dio closes in on Gyro, eventually vanishing from everyone's sight. Before they know it, he's neck and neck with Gyro. Dio takes note of the breathing cycle of Gyro's horse. Eight breaths, then a sway to the left, which allows him to make the pass. Dio extends the lead over the bridge. Gyro places two steel balls on his horse's hind legs, giving him a boost of energy to pass Dio. The horse also destroys the bridge behind him, forcing Dio to use another path. Meanwhile, Pocoloco wakes up late for the race. Nevertheless, a fortune teller said the next two months will be filled with success for Pocoloco. He thusly begins the race behind everyone else. Once he catches up to the rear, a gold coin is flung into his mouth. He then catches a glimpse of a girl's cleavage and recognizes a competitor's face on a wanted poster. Pocoloco follows the Sandman, who attempts to utilize a shortcut. The two climb to the top of a cliff, increasing their pace thereafter. After joining the lead group, Pocoloco catches a glimpse of Gyro in first place. Jojo determines the best chance for him to learn about the Steel Ball is here and now. He'll thusly make his move with 2,000 meters to go. However, Gyro veers off the course to cross a forest that will shave about 800 to 1,000 meters off his running distance. Jojo and Pocoloco take up the challenge to follow Gyro through the treacherous terrain, as does a sizable amount of the field. Jojo is shocked by Pocoloco's approach of having his eyes closed. However, his luck runs out when he takes a branch straight in the chest. Gyro thinks a runaway horse is gaining on him. When he notices Pocoloco being dragged along, the horse's stirrup. Gyro tosses two steel balls to clear a path for himself through the trees. Pocoloco follows closely, but the path closes up when the balls return to Gyro. Gyro exits the forest with a huge lead over the field. Despite some mishaps, however, Pocoloco closes in on the leader to surprise Gyro. With 4,000 meters to go, the Devil's Downhill stands before them. The pace slows down as everyone conserves energy for the final stretch. A cryptic man by a fence tells Pocoloco to remember the cow. He then appears on the horse, urging him not to hold back. The strange man's hand emerges from his own. Pocoloco then proclaims that once he takes the lead, he'll never give it back. The lucky man sprints past Gyro as the downhill portion begins. Riders fall off during the downhill, including Pocoloco. However, the lucky rider catches another break, sliding down the hill on a cow carcass. Gyro throws his ball at a rock formation to halt the cow sliding. However, Sandman descends down the rock formation, delaying the rock sliding just enough to allow Pocoloco to pass. Sandman takes the lead on foot, shocking everyone. The spectators marvel at his speed. Steven says the Sandman utilizes a running technique in which his heel barely touches the ground. Plus, instead of absorbing the impact, he uses the flow of the impact to go behind him, allowing him to accelerate in the process. Gyro contemplates Pocoloco's incredible luck, wondering if he can change it to his advantage. Gyro makes the pass as they enter the home stretch. Dio maneuvers his way through the crowd, using Jojo as a windshield. Jojo accelerates, kicking up rocks into Dio's face. Everyone's horse is at their limit, but the cryptic man urges Pocoloco to charge forward. Sandman jumps to a lead, but Gyro, Pocoloco, Jojo, and Dio are all neck and neck. Pocoloco utilizes a dead tree as a springboard to jump out to the lead, but Gyro races ahead of the pack. He reveals to Jojo that he used his steel ball to create a headwind for himself to move faster, much like a ship. Gyro, thusly, wins the first stage. That is, until the judges deliberate on places 2 through 5 and determine that Gyro used an unfair advantage when he attacked the Sandman down the rock slide. Gyro thusly receives a penalty for disrupting the Sandman, thus dropping him 20 places and making the Sandman the winner of round 1. The rankings after the first round are as follows, with Jojo taking 5th place. Gyro is seething with rage, but he tempers his emotions in the presence of Steven Steele. Gyro pops champagne bottles, and with the cork Jojo caught, Gyro teaches him how to use his legs. Later on, some sheriffs show Steven three dead bodies. 
They were all racers, and the sheriff suspects murder, but no one saw a thing. The sheriff informs Mountain Tim of the murders. Tim speaks of a legend where a shooting star fell, and anything that touches the spot will be able to pull out a mysterious power. And at the same time, they'll also be cursed. Tim finds a bottle with a bloody button inside, saying it's an important piece of evidence. The second stage is set to begin. Jojo tells Gyro it will be a battle over the water holes in the vast desert. The stage begins with Gyro leaping out to a huge lead once again. Frustrated by this, Jojo chases after him. Gyro changes course, choosing to skip the first water hole and cut across the entire wasteland. Mrs. Robinson, who's actually a dude, decides to follow the two. In addition, Mrs. Robinson's horse has the same dented horseshoe as the murderer. Jojo and Gyro argue over directions. Just then, the two are attacked from someone in front of them. It turns out the Chola cacti are propelling their needles towards the two. They believe Mrs. Robinson is attacking them somehow, so they flee. Jojo is knocked off his horse by the needles. Gyro urges the boy to mount his horse, but Johnny tells him to go ahead. He'll catch up after he wipes off his blood. Gyro, however, lunges in to attack Mrs. Robinson, but is knocked down by the Chola. Mrs. Robinson uses insects to stimulate the nearby Chola, and he aims to kill them both, here and now. All right, finally someone who thinks the way I do. Gyro uses the vibration from his steel balls to aim the needles at Mrs. Robinson, defeating him handily. Later on, Tim investigates Mrs. Robinson's horse, but determines the horseshoes don't match the murderer. In a flashback, a boy named Marco whacks shoes for his master, until the master conspired against the king, resulting in the death penalty for anyone associated with the master, including Marco. In the current timeline, Jojo practices the spin with the cork. Gyro notices someone, urging Jojo to grab a weapon. While doing so, Jojo ganders over at Gyro's luggage, seeing an image of Marco in the newspaper. Gyro excoriates Jojo for peeking at his luggage, yet Johnny wonders how he's connected to the boy. A racer approaches the two, saying he was bitten by a lizard. Gyro doesn't trust the man, and he tells him to wait for the rescue group. The man then begins to strangle himself, aiming to cut off the poisonous fingers. Gyro tosses him some fire, telling him to get the hell out of here. After they think he's dead after strangling himself, they look at the racer leaderboard and find out that he's one of three brothers who entered the race. A family of boom booms. Gyro tells Johnny to prepare for battle, but he is stymied when a sharp object protrudes from his foot. Jojo attempts to fire a pistol at the boom boom family, but it disassembles and burrows into Gyro's leg. What is this? Into my skin? The two think it has something to do with iron and magnetism. Gyro tosses his steel ball in retaliation, but it disintegrates in midair. Gyro catches a glimpse of a purple, anteater-like humanoid known as the Tomb of Boom. Andre decides to charge, with Gyro tossing his ball against a rock, ricocheting it through Andre's abdomen. While escaping, Gyro and Johnny notice the magnetism effect of the Boom Booms is weakening. Benjamin, the father, shoots through Andre, getting his blood on a Jojo. Benjamin then uses his power to control iron to reconfigure his face to look just like Jojo. When Mountain Tim comes, Benjamin plants some of his blood on him. Tim utilizes his stand ability of spreading his body parts along his rope to capture Benjamin. He escapes, however, making Tim believe that Jojo is the murderer. The blood splattered on the three, Gyro, Jojo, and Tim will eventually attract when they get close to each other, and thus, the Boom Boom plan of blowing them up will come to fruition. Tim begins chasing Gyro and Jojo. Metal then embeds into Jojo and Gyro's skin, knocking them off of their horses and pulling them ever closer to Tim. Gyro tosses his ball toward a rock formation, shattering the rocks into dust. The iron pebbles knock Tim off his horse and injure Gyro and Jojo. Tim is too close, however, as the magnetism pulls him in. As a last resort, Tim uses his stand ability to pull himself away from Gyro and Jojo so they don't explode. Gyro questions Tim about his abilities, and Tim says that about 15 years ago, he was in a place called the Devil's Palm with his army unit. Unfortunately, Tim was the only survivor of the unit, but as a reward, 
He had become one with the rope. Mountain Tim calls this ability a stand, and he believes the Boom Boom family also went into Devil's Palm. L.A. Boom Boom then catches the three in iron sand. The, the rope's been cut! He's coming! We're screwed! Jairo then urges Johnny to use the spin with one of Tim's fallen bullets. Mountain Tim's body comes flying over. Johnny, you must! Johnny's nails begin spinning, making him wondering what's happening. And because they're spinning at such a force, he's able to cut Benjamin at a distance. Jojo slices off LA's toes. Tim says it's his stand due to the influence of the Devil's Palm. They're in the Devil's Palm right now, and if they don't escape, they'll be trapped there forever. LA informs the others that there's a $200,000 bounty on Gyro's head. The three run away, and Jojo presses Gyro about the details concerning his past. Gyro's father was a doctor for both the rich and the poor. He taught Gyro about the spin, and at the age of 13, the boy became his assistant. Turns out, however, his father was an executioner. After killing someone, the father instructs Gyro to sanitize the sword. The duty of executing others has been the responsibility of the Zeppelis for over 380 years. The steel ball exists to bring peace to the departed. And at the age of 25, Gyro is to succeed his father. After stopping a criminal who used one of the guards as a hostage, Gyro has reservations about the decision to kill Marco. His father emphasizes that the law is the law, showing disappointment in his son. A noble proposes to Gyro that he join the steel ball run, and if he were to win, he would bring great dignity to the nation and earn Marco an amnesty. In the present time, Oyi Komova reaches a checkpoint, finding the torn off seal of the royal family from Gyro's country. Oyi Komova enters Gyro's room, but is confronted by Tim. Oyi Komova doesn't care, finding out that Gyro will be receiving a zombie horse that heals fatigue. The skin Tim pulled off the man explodes. Gyro and Jojo find Tim in a mangled state, as he tells them not to come closer. Gyro dodges Oyi Komova, but he did graze his fingers. Tim implores him to hold the pins in, otherwise he'll explode. Gyro knows Oyi Komova from his past. Apparently, he blew up the king's carriage, killing some people except for the king who was not there at the time, and he escaped prison as well. To disable the bombs, they must kill Oyi Komova. A mouse laced with bombs runs in and blows up. Gyro places the pin back in his hand so it won't explode. However, they start escaping through his sweat. Gyro goes for broke, tossing the ball at Oyi Komova, but his leg explodes. Instead of blowing up his hand, Gyro used the spin to redirect the explosion to his leg. He then says he must chase down Oyi Komova to prevent him from getting the zombie horse. While fleeing, Oyi Komova turns the water into bombs. The two run through the explosions, encountering hornets with pins on them. Gyro uses his ball to protect him with a spider's web, but the inside of his mouth explodes. It turns out that Oyi Komova can also turn smoke into bombs. Oyi Komova then pulls the webs closer to cut them, but Johnny's spinning nails are attached. This gives Gyro's steel balls increased range, which allows him to smack Oyi Komova in the face defeating him for good. In a flashback, we find out that Gyro is from Naples, a country that offered protection for the Vatican. Gregorio, Gyro's father, maintained a private life, avoiding sentimentality so he could perform his job uninhibited. When Gyro was once attacked by a female prisoner, Gregorio blamed him for his heart full of sentimentality. Gyro then took pity on Marco, a boy who was attempting to sew Gyro's ceremonial collar. Marco, however, was to be his first official execution. They find the zombie horse, and Gyro uses a string to sew up his injured leg. Joseph of Arimathea, the man who cleaned and buried Jesus Christ, drew up of a map of an unknown continent. The map was stolen 1,500 years later, when the continent of America was discovered. In the current timeline, Gyro suspects that F.V. Stroheim is doping his horse. The German's arm morphs into a gun as he begins shooting the two. Stroheim instructs Gyro to drop his balls, to which he obliges. Jojo thinks the race is too dangerous, but Gyro is steadfast in obtaining amnesty for Marco. Jojo's arm then separates. What is this? G gyro Wait! Wait for me! When Gyro looks, 
Jojo's hand has returned to normal. Jojo suspects this is not a stand, but something else. Steven Steele suspects that Gyro possesses a corpse in his bag. Something he received when he was crossing the Devil's Palm. Men behind a curtain are certain that Gyro has found the corpse. They utilized Oyi Kamova to retrieve it, but he failed. This group of men will use any means necessary of obtaining the corpse. They've designed this race to go through specific points on the map of Joseph of Arimathea. And Steven must obey them, since they are led by the President of the United States. Lucy notices the President's men on the top of the train, wondering what they are doing. While riding, Johnny notices Gyro missing from his horse. He then begins to search for him. However, the horse goes missing too. The equipment disappears, and Jojo feels like he's being attacked by something. He then suspects that something bigger is at play here in the Steel Ball Run. Jojo's horse disappears. A hook gouges his cheek, coming from a bird in the sky. He cuts his own cheek to remove the hook. Two more hooks appear from two feathers. Johnny hides under a rock, thinking these people are after the mummified skeleton that emerged from his left hand. But what is it? That mummy! Whose arm is it? The pork pie kid, who's an agent of the government, looks through the packs. Johnny's hand is pierced by the hook, dragging him out in the open. Johnny's stand emerges from his gashing wound, repeating the phrase, Movera Cruz. The stand activates the spin on Jojo's nails, allowing him to cut the rock and hurt Pork Pie Kid through the portal he created. The stand engraves the name on Johnny's arm, and he realizes the goal of the terrorist is to collect all the parts of the corpse. During the confusion, Gyro tossed his steel ball through the portal to reveal his location to Jojo, and now he's coming to rescue his friend. The kid uses hooks to search for Johnny, Knowing that his horse is very loyal to him, the pork pie kid sends back Johnny's horse to sniff him out. The kid eventually sets the area ablaze, thinking he's got Jojo, but he merely attacked a statue of Johnny. Jojo's nails, which he calls a tusk, allowed him to carve a tree mimicking himself. Jojo attacks the kid through the portal. Jojo then saves Gyro, but a hook comes in with devastating effect. That's why I let Gyro live, you twerp! The kid demands that Jojo hand over the corpse, but Jojo doesn't want to relinquish it, since it's giving him magical powers and the ability to walk. Eventually, with no other choice, he hands over the corpse. Jojo's nail stops spinning when the corpse goes away. Gyro makes the nails of the corpse spin, however, killing the kid. Gyro hands Johnny the hand of the corpse, saying they'll finish first and second in the steel ball run. Just then, Dio and Sandman come blazing through. Gyro jumps out to a lead. When a newspaper hits Jojo, he determines the letters written by the stand are actually a place for the next corpse part. The president's men find a cloth that has the same words burned into Johnny's arm. They determine that Johnny is in possession of the left or right arm of the corpse. And with the president possessing the heart, two parts are officially discovered. There are nine parts in total, and Lucy looks terrified after catching a glimpse of President Valentine's chest. Dio wins the second stage, with Jojo taking second, Sandman third, and Gyro fourth. In the Rocky Mountains, Gyro and Jojo see an unhorsed Dio. They check up on him, but he says, Get lost, you two! In the end, I'm the one who's gonna pass you up. Dio begins passing out, but a while later, he's completely fine. Jojo sees the cracking skin on Dio's right arm and his neck. He also sees his bone structure changing as well. The two arrive at a village at night, wondering where Dio went. Soon enough, Jojo watches Dio eat some stones. Dio claims they're gastroliths, which help with digestion. Dio drinks some coffee, revealing a mouth that reaches towards his ears. When Gyro returns, Dio has transformed into a dinosaur. The dinosaur whips Gyro. Gyro! Jojo defends himself with his tusks thinking Dio is also a terrorist. Dio dodges Gyro's steel ball, but is hit on the return. The dinosaur pins him down, but a steel ball in a can hits him in the neck. The two decide to retreat, as Gyro notices the spot for the next corpse part. Dio, in his dinosaur form, can only see moving objects, so the two still themselves. He begins sniffing them out, unable to locate them. He then fouls the steel ball, knowing it will return to Gyro. 
Gyro uses the spinning of the ball to flatten his legs so that the ball goes away from him. But just then, a dead bear turns into a dinosaur. Gyro hides Johnny in a sewer and says that the letters on his arm show a constellation of the Big Dipper. The corpse is on that hill. In a flashback, Dio survived death when his parents attempted to bury him in a hole. Seeing that he was alive, the mother abandoned the father and decided to save Dio instead. They then lived on a farm where the proprietor of the farm made sexual advances for five years on the mother. But after she had enough and refused, he punched holes in their food cups. Dio's mother subsequently held the boiling stew in her hands for Dio so that he could survive. A year later, his mother died from tetanus, most likely from the germs from the burns. Dio, thusly, vowed revenge on that man. In the current time, Dio returns. Gyro and Johnny escape through the sewer, but smaller dinosaurs give chase. The two eliminate them, finding out they were mice transformed into dinosaurs. The two are surrounded by the villagers, who are also turned into dinosaurs. It is then that they notice that their own skin is starting to crack, realizing they were already scratched by Dio and now are transforming into dinosaurs as well. However, the corpse part in Jojo's arm is fighting off the infection. So if they can find the next corpse part for Gyro, they can save him as well. The two make their way to the palm-like structure, but Gyro is running out of time. The guardian of the next corpse part reveals itself, and it looks like it's in possession of two parts, the eyes. Unfortunately, Dio, with the help of two raptors, was able to springboard himself up to the area and grab the two eyes for himself. There was an accident. We all got caught in quicksand, and I was the only survivor. Thus testified Valentine. This was how he found the corpse. He thusly became the 23rd president of the United States. Once he met Steven, he became a secret backer of the Steel Ball Run, in hopes of attaining the corpse. His full name is Funny Valentine, and when he was in Congress, he joined a Puritan search party traveling to a point on the map. He was the only survivor once again. Due to the miraculous powers and lack of decay, Gyro believes the corpse to be of some saint. Turbo, says the Guardian. Jojo recognizes this as the same behavior with his stand meaning it holds the key to the next corpse part. Jojo attacks Dio with his tusks, but the transformed Gyro defends against this. Dr. Ferdinand, who's obviously a male, commemorates Dio on a job well done. He was the one that turned him into a dinosaur, and now the doctor recovers the eyes. Ferdinand reveals that the corpse is 1900 years old, perplexing Johnny. He goes on to say that the one who collects all the parts will receive true power and the Eternal Kingdom. Jojo releases the left arm and attacks Ferdinand as a dinosaur. He then throws the eyes at Gyro, but is captured. Dio looks ready to attack, but Gyro breaks the dino spell by lodging an eyeball into his face. The eye overtakes Gyro as the other one is in the steel ball. The ball smacks Ferdinand, but he utilizes the dinosaurs for protection. They eventually scatter, yet with Gyro's enhanced abilities, he can read the vibrations of the other side. I can see where he is. That dinosaur, inside its body. Jojo returns to normal. They defeat the doctor, leaving the remains to the cougars. Somehow, Dio grabbed the other eye. He also retained the ability to transform into a dinosaur. After leaving, Jojo says Dio will come after them and the other corpse parts. Gyro wonders who the corpse was but there's no time to ponder it over right now, as they're back in the heat of the race. Dio rides behind Gyro in the final stretch. The racers have a choice of going a longer, flatter route around the lake, or a shorter route on the cliffs. Gyro, however, decides to go through the lake itself, due to the shallow depth. I'm going to get the 100 points on this stage. Johnny hits Gyro with harsh truce, saying Dio and Sandman are more desperate and more hungry than he is. You can't win unless you hunger. Jojo leaves the water as Gyro pushes on. Dio exits the lake first, but Gyro accelerates, tossing his luggage to lighten the load. His horse hits the wall though, but Gyro uses his ball to remove the water from his body, further lightening the load. A gastrolith hits Valkyrie, Gyro's horse, causing him to slow down. 
However, in a surprise finish, Jojo passes Dio to capture the victory. At least, that's what it looks like at first. Jojo was only second across the line, as Hot Pants already finished the stage one hour prior. And with this, stage four to Kansas City is already underway. Hot Pants approaches the two. I will now hang you both from this tree. According to Hot Pants, they ate his cow. So now they must pay the price. He uses his cream starter stand to manipulate Gyro's flesh. Soon enough, Johnny and Gyro's faces are covered in flesh. Gyro's steel ball hits Hot Pants in the back. Jojo convinces Hot Pants that it wasn't them, so he disables his stand. However, he doesn't apologize as he rides off. Gyro determines there's a binary code inside the next clue, which indicates the next part is in Kansas City. Gyro and Johnny get stuck in the forest, circling back to the same spot over and over again. Hot Pants is having the same issue, so they decide to cooperate with one another. Gaucho is also struggling to escape, so he shouts at a cryptic man inside a house. If you want to get out of here, you must kill me. Gaucho fires away, clipping the man, but the man wins in the end, thanking Gaucho for the duel. The three continue circling back to the house, wasting over an hour of their time. Out of options, Hot Pants suggests they take on the man, three against one. Hot Pants places his left hand on the roof with the cream starter. Jojo and Gyro distract the man. The man finishes burying Gaucho. He tells the two that only Jojo has a chance of beating him. Gyro tosses his steel ball in rage, but somehow it misses and returns back to him. The man is Ringo Road again, and his stand is called Mandom. For precisely six seconds, I can rewind time. This is how he managed to trap them in the forest by making them think that they traveled to the next tree, sending them in circles over and over again. Ringo wants a fair duel, hence he traps people until they accept his offer. Hot Pants distracts Ringo, slicing off his hand. Jojo attacks, but Ringo turns back the clock once more. Ringo shoots Hot Pants' hand, provoking Johnny. Nevertheless, both Jojo and Hot Pants are shot down. Johnny! Ringo shoots Gyro in the stomach, and derides the man, saying he doesn't possess the necessary passion to be worthy of killing. Ringo will take Jojo's corpse part to Valentine, leaving Gyro to stew in agony. Gyro realizes that Ringo's cult revolver was out of lethal range when he shot Jojo in the head, meaning he could still be alive. As a lad, Ringo was a frail boy. One night, a soldier killed his family and attempted to rape him. Ringo stole his gun, but dropped it when he started coughing up blood. Fortunately, he quickly grabbed it to kill the vile man. In the current timeline, Gyro sees a vision of his father, who derides his sentimentality. Leave this orchard in silence. Gyro lashes out against his father, claiming he's got the sensation of victory. Gyro uses the ball to see that Jojo's still alive. Ringo has already discovered the location of the next part, so Gyro's ball takes the offensive. Ringo reverses time once again, imploring him to leave the orchard. Gyro discovers Ringo's Achilles heel, his left collarbone. Gyro breaks in. The two engage each other, resulting in severe damage for both. Since Ringo's left side is paralyzed, he has to shoot his watch to turn back time. The duel happens again, with Ringo defending his left side. However, he misses Gyro's vitals. Gyro used his steel ball to send wood splinters into Ringo's body. As he begins to pass away, the fight ends with Ringo welcoming Gyro to the true man's world as he finally passes away. Later on, Jojo recalls how he was healed by Hot Pants' cream starter and how he found out that he was actually a she. In the now, Sandman tells him that Dio's in the lead by one hour. And one other thing, a storm is going to hit tomorrow. Jojo determines that Dio is heading towards the next corpse part, based on Sandman's info. He also tells Gyro that Ringo sent out a carrier pigeon to help the terrorist with the corpse location. Valentine wonders where the pigeon is. The next part is the spine, the most important part. Valentine doesn't trust Steven and will eliminate him when he stops being useful. Lucy, through lip reading, ascertains the entire discussion. Distressed that Steven will be killed, 
Lucy intercepts the pigeon just before Valentine arrives. Blackmore determines something is amiss, since Ringo sent two pigeons together and one is missing. Valentine aims to check below the cage, but the pigeon flies out to distract them. Blackmore gives chase, walking on the raindrops. After catching the pigeon, Valentine closes the building to catch the intruder. Lucy is now in major trouble. Blackmore suspects it's an inside job. Lucy looks to escape down the building while Blackmore peers through a window. Blackmore notices her bursting through the window as the president's men fire their shotguns. Trapped in the bathroom by the president's men, Tim drops a rope down to Lucy. Blackmore suspects that someone helped the intruder. Tim embraces Lucy, but she emphasizes that she only loves Steven. Tim instructs her that if she wishes to protect Steven, she'll find allies in Gyro and Johnny. Blackmore confronts Tim, precipitating a battle. Blackmore's stand, catching the rainbow, allows him to manipulate raindrops in various ways to inflict fatal wounds, killing Tim in the process. Blackmore inspects Tim, determining that Lucy is the culprit. Blackmore aims to track down Lucy as she recovers the spine. Dio sees a vision of the corpse part with his eye. Blackmore bites Lucy with his stand ability, aiming to recover the spine. After doing so, he calls the president. While waiting, however, he feels a strong urge to make the spine his own. The phone pole transports to the middle of a town, interrupting the call. Blackmore then notices Jesus Christ touching the spine. He has shown himself to me. Oh, only to myself. Lucy shoots and severely injures Blackmore while he's distracted. She then rides off with the spine. Blackmore temporarily heals himself with his stand ability, knowing he'll die when the rain stops. He will thusly pursue the spine with his last act, so that the president may become the head of the world. Gyro sees something heading toward them with his eye, as Johnny points out Dio. The two attack, but Dio transforms into a dinosaur, warning them to never approach him unless they want to die. Dio accelerates in the downpour, taking the path of least resistance. Jojo says they can only follow and hope for a mistake, but Gyro can't accept this reasoning. Despite Gyro's perseverance, however, Dio maintains the lead. Gyro is reminded of Ringo's words, finding his own path into the light. Despite disappearing for a while, Gyro arrives behind Dio in no time flat. The two horses synchronize their strides as Johnny poises himself to capitalize on one of their mistakes. At these speeds, the horses will collapse from exhaustion, so Dio turns fleas into dinosaurs to attack Valkyrie. Johnny shoots his tusk in retaliation, but Dio nearly cuts his arm off. Gyro matches his steel ball speed to that of the horses, disguising its real speed so that it smacks Dio in the face, causing him to nearly fall off his horse. The horse collapses, however, leaving Dio to scream in frustration. Gyro excoriates Johnny for helping him out, but apologizes promptly. The two encounter Lucy, who presents the spine and begs for their help. Blackmore intervenes as Gyro and Johnny lash out. Blackmore manipulates the drops into sharp objects as he looks poised to kill Lucy for her sin. Gyro throws his ball among the raindrops, creating enough friction to evaporate them and smack Blackmore in the face. The rain lets up, killing Blackmore for good. The spine then lodges into Johnny's back, revealing the locations of the next three corpse parts. Gyro and Johnny coast into the finish line, as more than 1,400 racers withdraw due to the storms, leaving about 400 racers left. President Valentine is perturbed about the missing corpse part. Gyro takes third place in the fourth stage, with Higashikata taking first. Dio walks his horse across the line in 54th place, to everyone's surprise. In a flashback, we find out the legs, the ears, and the right arm are located in the Great Lakes. The next one in particular is at Lake Michigan. Lucy revealed to the two that the president has an old map and the heart of the corpse. Gyro instructs her to get close to the president and steal the heart. To do so, Gyro hands her the left eye. Although reluctant, she accepts the task. Dio meets with one of the president's representatives, saying that Gyro and Johnny know where the next corpse parts are. He then offers to sell the president his eye in exchange for New York's Manhattan Island. The representative threatens Dio and walks off, 
but Dio claims there's a traitor, as there was a third person near Blackmore's corpse. Dio will reveal this information once he takes the parts from Gyro, as long as he gets what he wants. President Valentine, who is listening in on the conversation, is repulsed. Dio requests the President's representative to have another stand user to be his subordinate so he can accomplish his mission. A stand user comes out of its hiding spot, turning a beehive into a homunculus. The homunculus shatters Dio's watch, as Valentine decides they'll steal Dio's eyes when the time is appropriate. The fifth stage is underway. Johnny and Gyro decide to rest, thinking how they'll cross the Mississippi River. Gyro sent a letter to his home country that was forwarded to the Vatican, asking about the corpse. They responded by saying no records of saints exist in the United States. Johnny speculates that the Vatican may know who the corpse is, but doesn't wish to reveal this information since it may be too sacred. Some strange occurrences begin happening with the barn, causing the two to freak out. They're coming out! The barn shatters into pieces as Dot Han comes racing in. Gyro throws his steel ball, but it breaks down to its core. Dot Han begs for help as the two attempt to avoid getting trapped by the falling barn. Dot Han is torn apart as monsters from the cornfield come ever closer. Gyro determines that Dio is working with another stand user to cause the wreckage, as Johnny says he needs to make it to Lake Michigan. In a flashback, Johnny was born into wealth, with his father being a seven-time winner of the Triple Crown, a top-notch horsing race. When Johnny's father found out he was keeping a mouse as a pet, he told him to drown him immediately. Johnny's older brother, Nicholas, told him to release the mouse into the forest, and to use a stuffed mouse from school to pretend he really killed the mouse. Nicholas was an exceptional horse rider, until a small mouse spooked his horse, causing a catastrophic accident in which he was killed. Years later, Johnny wishes to use his brother's boots in an upcoming race, but his father stringently declines. The two fight over the boots, with Johnny knocking his father into some glass. You took the wrong son! George, the father, officially kicks his son out of the house. In the present time, Johnny attributes all the bad events in his life to fate. The monsters give chase, gashing Johnny in his side. Jojo catches a glimpse of the stand user in the cornfield. Flying dinosaurs join the pursuit, as Gyro instructs Jojo to jump from the horse. After doing so, the two hide under some mud, as Johnny's mouth bursts into flames. Johnny determines that the opponent's ability has something to do with sound, as he laments their hopeless position. Gyro claims the secret to the steel balls lies in the pursuit to infinity. Gyro draws the golden rectangle, which is the foundation for every perfect structure. My father trained me so I could create the golden rectangle with my hand. With geometry, Gyro can create the golden spin, which harkens to the golden spiral or the golden ratio in mathematics. Gyro pulls out his belt buckle, which is shaped like a golden rectangle, and urges Johnny to say they can't do it three more times. Jojo shoots the monsters as they head into the river. Johnny says they can't do it again, and a bunch of green homunculi surround the river. They send sound waves through the water, as Gyro urges Johnny to attack the stand user, where there's no signs of sound. Frustrated, Johnny demands Gyro to hand over the buckle, but Gyro makes himself clear in following the Zeppeli family rules. I explained everything to you. This is lesson four. Pay your respects. Johnny attacks the corn, catching a glimpse of Higashikata. The sounds approach as Gyro forges a sphere in the water to defend the two. The strain, however, cuts off his arms and leg. Johnny screams in agony. Sandman! Go call Hot Pants! Sandman dispatches Higashikata, but reveals that he plans to take their corpse part to broker a deal with the President of the United States in an effort to save his ancestor's land. Johnny laments his current situation, yet he finds the golden rectangle all throughout nature, particularly in a mouse that looks like Danny, the mouse he had when he was a child. With this knowledge, he unlocks a new hidden power within himself. He creates a drill that pierces a hole in the water. He then focuses his next shot on the Sandman, but he deflects it into a tree. Johnny feels helpless once more. I can't. I'm sorry, Gyro. I couldn't do anything. The bullet holes from Johnny's nails begin moving, attacking the Sandman and the homunculi. In a sense, the spin is alive within the hole. 
Sandman reveals that his name is a misnomer. The actual name is Soundman, and his stand is called In a Silent Way. Johnny has two shots remaining as the Soundman jumps in. He dodges the nails, figuring out the spin chases him for about seven to eight seconds. Johnny fires his last shot, missing decisively. However, the hole from the butterfly hits the sound man in the back. Johnny redirects the bullet wound from sound man's back to his heart, but it disappears just before hitting the vital organ. Johnny pulls out a ball from the belt buckle and throws it through sound man's neck, finishing him off. Hot Pants arrive shortly after. Johnny notices the same crest from Gyro's home country on Hot Pants' bag. She takes the corpse parts, knocks out Johnny, and cries with the corpse parts in her possession. Johnny and Gyro wake up sometime later, discovering that their wounds are healed. In a flashback, Gyro fooled around with a girl that he later found out had a tan line on her ring finger. In the now, Gyro wakes up in the snow. Johnny's fingernails are growing back, as we find out that Poco Loco won the fifth stage. Dio is two to three days behind them. Johnny wonders why Hot Pants left a vertebrae from the corpse spine in his back. He then thinks Hot Pants is collecting the parts for the Vatican. Gyro determines they're being tracked, as he thinks the corpse is hidden under the water. A kid appears with Gyro's steel ball in hand. They chase her to a giant tree, as they both suspect the corpse parts are hidden inside. The two intrude upon the girl, who's named Sugar Mountain, while she plays with some dolls. She gives Gyro his steel ball back along with two other precious items for answering a question correctly. Frustrated, Gyro and Johnny begin searching the area, attempting to uncover the corpse parts. The girl then produces a full platter of food, making Johnny think she's a stand user. She continues asking questions about the stuff they've dropped into the nearby spring, giving Gyro an idea. He cuts off some rabbit ears, tosses them into the spring, and the girl asks if they dropped the rabbit ears or the human ears from the corpse. Johnny says the rabbit ears, and they immediately embed into his face. Sugar Mountain says they must use up all the items before the sun sets. Otherwise, they'll be absorbed into the tree and turned into quote-unquote fruit. And if this happens, they'll subsequently have to wait their turn behind the other people who have already been turned into fruit. The two have to use the items before the 11 men who are chasing them catch up. Jairo attempts to buy some useless land with the money, gold, and diamond. But the men refuse. Jairo's leg turns into a tree when he gives away his wristwatch, indicating they must use up the items legitimately. Johnny determines this is another test to see if they are worthy of the corpse parts. The two encounter difficulty spending the exorbitant amounts of cash. They buy a building with the gold and the diamond, but end up with more cash to spend, about $30 million worth. The 11 horsemen enter the town as the two enter a casino. After betting it all on the roulette, their bodies morph into trees. Johnny attempts to take back their bet, but the casino staff doesn't allow this. The horsemen enter the casino. The dealer intended to have the ball land on black six, but through Johnny's tusk, he makes a hole to allow the ball to reach red 27. Jojo and Gyro attack the horsemen, but notice the multiple men are merged as one. The two fight against the merged being, but they eventually have to take cover when they're outnumbered. Jojo uses his nail to take out the gunmen, with seven more left. Johnny has one nail left, and Gyro is severely injured. Gyro attempts to trade his watch for a piece of string to sew up his fatal wounds. The men begin attacking, with Johnny fending them off. Gyro throws his steel ball in retaliation, but the two are surrounded on all sides. Gunshots fill the men with holes, coming from the other gamblers. Turns out, Gyro spent the $60 million to hire the guys as bodyguards. We successfully used up all the things, Johnny. When the two leave the casino, Gyro still turns into a tree. Johnny determines they must use up the corpse parts, but he's reluctant to give them away. Johnny screams in agony as Gyro becomes one with the tree. Shortly afterward, Gyro returns to his human body as Johnny gave away his corpse parts to the president's henchmen. The man rides away as Johnny sobs in the snow, realizing his dream of walking again is fading away. In a flashback, Gyro and his father are in the operating room, only having enough blood to save the mother or the child. Gyro proposes that they let the father choose, but Gregorio says it's best if he knows nothing. He thusly places the ball in Gyro's court, forcing him to make a decision. 
Sugar Mountain says that although they lost it all, they'll eventually gain everything. Despite all their hardships, Gyro proposes a toast to finding the next part. Mike O, the president's bodyguard, informs Dio they've recovered both ears and the right arm. Dio informs Mike that the traitor is a woman, weighing less than 51 kilograms. So he promptly leaves to relay this information to Valentine. They narrow the list down to 282 suspects. And Mike uses his stand ability, tubular bells, to memorize the scent of the person who placed the phone call to ask for Mountain Tim's help. Valentine grants Mike the permission to execute the traitor when found. Lucy overhears a conversation that Valentine is searching for a female weighing less than 51 kilograms. Lucy checks out several books from the library, one of them being the fourth installment of the Sherlock Holmes series. Scarlet Valentine, the First Lady, is an ardent fan of the series. Lucy falls into the First Lady, squeezing Scarlet's breast. She then determines that Scarlet is bisexual, which gives Lucy a means of accessing Valentine's headquarters. Lucy and Scarlet are hitting it off. The First Lady reveals she's only married to Funny Valentine for his power and wealth. Though, she says this was just a joke. After Lucy sits on Scarlet's face, uh, yeah, it actually happened. The First Lady falls asleep, thanks to the drug that Lucy put in her tea. Lucy sneaks through the mansion, coming across Valentine in the midst of a nap. Valentine wakes up. Lucy comes out, but with the face of Scarlet. In a flashback, Hot Pants used her spray in a way that would allow Lucy to change her face only one time to anyone that she touched. In the now, Valentine senses something is off. The balloon dogs from Mike O surround the room. Lucy confronts the president, and we find out that Hot Pants gave her a sleeping drug. She's hiding them behind her nail, and it knocks someone out for approximately two minutes, and it gives them amnesia. Lucy puts the president to sleep, and locates the heart. Tubular Bells attacks Lucy as she notices the other corpse parts. Scarlet arrives as Mike O realizes that one of his balloons has popped. Scarlet begins shooting Lucy, but she's eventually tackled. Scarlet gains the upper hand by torturing Lucy. Lucy sheds her skin disguise, placing it on Scarlet. They attack and kill Scarlet. Maiko notices the blood in the bathroom as Hot Pants materializes from the gutter. Lucy displays the parts for Hot Pants to see as Valentine finally realizes what happened. Maiko turns screws into balloons. Hot Pants retaliates, but Mike cuts her hand off. Hot Pants is severely injured, as Mike O catches a glimpse of Lucy next to the corpse of the First Lady. Mike O blows into his nails, but thanks to Hot Pants' splattered blood, she was able to infiltrate her body with her stand ability. Thusly, when Mike O blows into the balloon, he also blows up his own head and his neck, to the point where it explodes and kills him. The bodyguards break in, only to find Lucy disguised as Scarlet once again. Hot Pants escapes with all the parts, except for the right arm and the right eye. She instructs Lucy to play the parts of the president's wife until the race is over, and to blame everything on her. Lucy does just that, but she cries as she thinks of Steven, Gyro, and Johnny. Magent Magent and Weekapipo watch over a frozen strait. In a flashback, Weekapipo was a member of the country's highest ranking guard troop. One night, he found his sister badly beaten by her husband. After losing vision in one eye, Wikipipo had the permission from the Pope to annul the marriage. Embarrassed by this turn of events, the husband challenged Wikipipo to a duel with steel balls. After winning, Gregorio informs him that he must go into exile due to the family's influence in the country. After his sister's death, Wikipipo works for the president in recovering the corpse parts and killing Johnny and Gyro. In the now, Wikipipo urges Magenta Magenta to not take their opponents lightly. Gyro worries that the ice is too thin, as Poco Loco fastly approaches. Gyro thinks Poco Loco is going to use the native roots, i.e. floating logs underneath the ice. As Poco Loco passes, the two notice Wikipipo and Magenta Magenta approaching. Wikipipo throws his steel ball as Gyro retaliates. After this attack, Gyro immediately recognizes his opponent. But in an instant, Johnny's left half and Gyro's right half are completely missing. In a flashback, Gyro was in the operating room treating an unnamed girl. Despite his mother's wishes to treat the more pressing injuries, Gyro began to operate on her eye in hopes of returning her vision. But unfortunately, some steam disturbed the spin on his ball, 
In the now, Jairo says Weka Pipo is using a technique called the wrecking ball. Through a shockwave, Weka Pipo's ability makes the victim think their left side is missing. Magenta Magenta looks to shoot, but Johnny fires back. Magenta repels the attacks with his stand. He does the same against Jairo's steel ball. Weka Pipo knows they're close to the corpse's legs, based on the map he saw. He also believes the wolf following Johnny and Gyro may be the host. Wicked Peepo throws his balls, knocking down Gyros with ease, due to the fact that the golden rectangle doesn't exist within this frigid environment. Back to the surgery, Gyro laments the fact that he couldn't revive the girl's eyesight. Gregorio gives Gyro a scolding glare. In the now, Gyro and Jojo defend themselves as Magenta Magenta shoots the wolf. Jojo's out of nails, as Gyro's hands are mangled from the attacks. Unable to see out of his left eye, Gyro tosses his ball in desperation. Luckily, he hits Magenta Magenta. The government agent fires back, hitting Gyro. Gyro takes the bullet that went into his skin and uses it as a steel ball. But Magenta blocks with his stand ability. Magenta turns off his ability to shoot the two, but the bullet that was deflected comes straight from the sky and down through his head. Johnny's nails grow back. Weak people throws his balls. Gyro throws his in retaliation, instructing Jojo to provide defense. They both get hit as Weak people uses his steel ball to minimize the damage he takes. Weak people hides the wolf corpse with his steel ball to prevent Gyro from using the golden rectangle as a reference. The left side ataxia affects Gyro once more as Wicked Peepo throws his steel balls. Fortunately, with the falling snow, Gyro has his golden rectangle reference point, allowing him to destroy Wicked Peepo's balls. The government agent claims the falling snow means Gyro was chosen, a miracle as it were. Gyro reveals that the blind girl that he operated on years ago was in fact Wicked Peepo's sister, and she's still alive thanks to his father. Just then, Jojo and Gyro find the path across the ice. With the corpse legs in their possession, Gyro asks Wicked People to watch over Lucy. At the beginning of Chapter 55, Johnny details some of the activities him and Gyro had to perform while competing in the steel ball run, including brushing their horse's hair, taking longer routes to avoid danger, and crossing streams and rivers. The competitors are now in the final stretch for Stage 6, and everyone's preparing for a mad dash to claim the 100 points. Pocoloco stand, Heya, says that if he goes to the right, he'll be able to ride the wind and gain an advantage over the other competitors. As Pocoloco takes a safe route, Johnny and Jairo are heading for a crevice. But thanks to their combined abilities, they're able to make a metal rope out of Jairo's steel ball, which allows them to cross the ravine. And with this, Jairo and Johnny easily pull ahead Gyro wins the stage, and Johnny takes second place. Off in the distance, we find out that Magenta Magenta is still living. He's pissed off at Wicca Peepo and vows revenge. He also knows that Lucy Steele is the traitor. Four weeks ago, Steven finds out that Lucy is dead. Although he panics at first and begins to cry, he immediately determines that the corpse is not his wife. As Gyro and Johnny camp for the night, they see Hot Pants riding through. They follow her to a building, bursting their way in. Gyro asks a nun about hot pants. Gyro then investigates the area, as Johnny immediately recognizes the nun as hot pants. Hot pants says she lost all her corpse parts, as a child membrane covers her body. Johnny worries that she was attacked, as she says that they have to purify it with water. Gyro confronts the stand civil war, who has assembled hot pants as corpse parts. The two are then attacked by objects they've thrown away in their life. We then catch a brief glimpse of the rankings after stage 6. Valentine claims it's time for him to collect all the corpse parts. Gyro attacks Civil War with his steel ball. The stand purposefully disassembles to avoid the attack. Gyro sees his old steel ball spinning before him. The small boy fused with hot pants calls her Big Sister. In a flashback, the two are being attacked by a grizzly bear. To save herself, Hot Pants sacrificed her brother to the bear. Guilt-ridden, she henceforth became a servant of God. Hot Pants then disappears, with Johnny catching a glimpse of Danny, the mouse who accidentally killed his brother. Jairo is enveloped by a membrane-like substance, screaming for Johnny's help. Jojo catches the mouse in a boot, the same boot that he tried to borrow from Nicholas. 
Nicholas's face then appears, blaming Johnny for killing him. Jojo is enveloped like Gyro, but he desperately goes for the water in the canteen. The mouse lunges in. Johnny shoots his nails, hitting the canteen so that he can dissolve the membrane. Jesus Christ then appears. If your heart is wavering, then do not shoot, because then the door to a new path will be open to you. Johnny's legs begin twitching as the mouse distracts him. Jojo finds Gyro, and the Steel Ball user says that the stand user is nearby. Johnny destroys the objects from his past, but is confronted by his father. Jojo looks to shoot, but is reminded of the words he heard earlier. Thinking of these words, he now determines that he heard Christ. Johnny shoots his father's ear. Gyro informs Johnny he's found the stand user, Axel Rowe, who Johnny immediately shoots through the throat. You finally killed me, and that's why you, Johnny Joestar, will bear the burden of everything I've discarded. Now my past is purified. Axel Rowe is revived in his stand, Civil War. He then tells Johnny that he's transferred all his sins to him. He then tells Johnny that he was enlisted in the army. As a part of his responsibility, he was supposed to light the lamp when the enemy was coming in, but he overslept and he didn't do this. Moments later, the people of the town that he was supposed to keep guard over were all massacred. Johnny's attacked by dead corpses. As he hears the words of Christ once more, Johnny, surprisingly, then shoots himself in the head. And as the bullet hole begins to rotate, he begins to dissolve into it. Johnny's body is ripped to shreds. Axel Rowe grabs the corpse legs. Johnny's hand then appears out of the hole that he created, shooting Axel Rowe in the face. What? What is this? With Johnny's new ability, he can move freely within the infinite space that he creates. Johnny blasts the old soldiers to pieces when they attack him. Jojo shoots Axel Rowe in the head. But he still lives. Thanks to his stand, Civil War, Axel lives within the sins he passed on to Johnny. Axel looks to escape with all the corpse parts, save for the head. Jojo's hand grabs the corpse through the wall. Gyro notes that Johnny is prepared to throw everything away to attain the corpse. Axel sticks his hand through the portal, gashing Jojo's neck at the expense of his own hand. Johnny reveals that he made Axel kill him so that he could transfer his sins back to him. Just then, a gunshot blasts Axel in the neck, coming from Funny Valentine. The president grabs the corpse, saying civil war cannot affect him. Jojo desperately tries to stop him, but the president escapes, saying he still needs the head, Dio's left eye, and the traitor's right eye. Gyro takes sixth place, with Johnny taking seventh in the seventh stage. Jojo eliminates some assassins sent by the government. Gyro notes that Dio won the stage, putting him in first place overall. Steven Steele then pieces together several clues, determining that Lucy disguised herself as Scarlet Valentine. Magenta, still working for Valentine, says they don't need Steven anymore, and he thusly shoots Steven. In a flashback, Gyro instructed Wikipipo to protect Lucy, who looks like someone else thanks to Hot Pants' stand. Wikipipo finds Steven bleeding. He then dodges Magenta's gunfire, the two former allies engage each other on top of the carriage. While Magenta assumes a defensive position, Wikipipu figures out that Lucy is disguised as Scarlet. As several gunmen from the government chase Wikipipu, he gives them left side ataxia to make them go off trail. Valentine grabs Lucy, and she tells herself that if he makes any sort of move, she'll bite her own tongue off and die. The right eye falls out of her pocket, thanks to the nearby corpse parts forcing her to grab the president's face to distract him. We then have a flashback to Lucy's past. It turns out that Lucy's father sold her to the mafia to cover a large debt. Steven, who was saved from despair thanks to Lucy, instructed Lucy's father to say she was damaged, i.e. was not a virgin anymore, so that the mafia would sell her back. Steven thusly bought back Lucy, and the two engaged in marriage thereafter. But it was a platonic love between the two friends. The two never engaged in sexual relations. In the now, Valentine approaches the door. Lucy distracts him with her cuteness, and Valentine says, when the race is over, he'll explain the things possible on this earth. Valentine then makes a table analogy about napkins and the prime mover, and being the first one to set the rules. Soon, 
I will obtain the power, the object, that all will pay their respects to. Something irrefutable, something immovable. Is that true power? Valentine then demands that Lucy take her clothes off as he gets ready to rape her. Valentine takes off his shirt and we see some wounds on his back that happened when he was tortured as a soldier. He then imposes himself on top of Lucy, but she attempts to fight back. I thought so. So the traitor was you all along. Lucy's second skin then goes on top of the president and with this opportunity, she stabs him in the neck. It looks to be all over for Funny Valentine as he desperately crawls on the floor. But just then, his body disappears and reappears once more as if it was never harmed whatsoever. As I thought, the president is a stand user and the devil! We then catch a glimpse of Valentine's stand as it looks like Lucy has vacated the room. But in actuality, she was hiding underneath the table all this time just waiting for Valentine to leave. Lucy then looks for an exit, and as she looks up the chimney, she is engulfed by a bright light. Valentine enters the room as Lucy is shivering in fear. Valentine is now infatuated with Lucy. He demands the right eye back. After stripping her, he finds out that Lucy is pregnant with the head. One of Dio's dinosaurs leap from Magenta's coat. In this split moment, Magenta lights some explosives. Weak People uses a steel ball to protect Steven, and another one to guide the horses into the Delaware River. Magenta shoots Weak People, but is eventually dragged to the bottom of the river, where he activates his defensive stand. Although he'll never die, Magenta will remain still indefinitely. Despite this, he believes Dio will save him, like he saved him at the Frozen Strait. Chapter 63 is titled, Seven Days in a Week, and I will read it word for word. So Johnny, I know this is going to sound like a ripoff of something else, but I just came up with a gag. Huh? The title is, This is how I spend my week. I'm going to say the days of the week in Italian, starting from Monday all the way to Sunday. But I'm going to turn stupid on Wednesday and then make some espresso on Thursday. On Friday, I'll mix in sugar and on Saturday, I'll drink it. Sunday is a day of rest. All right, here I go. Lunetti, Monday, L-U-N-E-D-I. Martetti, Tuesday, M-A-R-T-E-D-I. Me? What was it again? I forgot! <laughs> what was it? What was it? <laughs> um, what was it again? <laughs> I completely forgot! <laughs> Domenica. Sunday, the day of rest. Hmm, very good. Awesome, it was totally cool. It seemed like a really happy week. Like, you started to lose track of time. Right. Once you finish writing it down, we'll head on our way. Now back to the story. Johnny and Gyro follow Dio's trail. At Independence Hall, Jojo spots Wikipipo with binoculars. The two prepare to ambush Dio and steal the left eye. Jojo takes his mission very seriously saying that he'll shoot Dio. Gyro urges him not to get carried away and just focus on attaining the corpse. While looking at Dio's horse, Gyro gets cornered by Valentine and his henchmen. Johnny attempts to warn Gyro by screaming out, but is shot in the face by an unknown assailant. What, what just happened? I, I got shot. I, what, what? Gyro tells the henchman not to move as he grabs his steel ball. Jojo makes a desperate attempt to fire back, but he is shot once more in the wrist. Gyro wants to help Johnny, yet the henchman activates a grid on the ground with his stand. The shooter fires one more time at Jojo, but Johnny manages to escape through a sewer. Gyro notices Wikipipo as he throws his ball at the henchman. With his stand, the henchman teleports the ball into Gyro's neck. He then propels nails into Gyro's legs. The henchman pulls out a bottle of acid, as he looks for the finishing blow. Chocolate Disco. That's my ability stand name. Chocolate Disco. That's all I'm going to say. I'm done. That's all. Gyro throws his balls, but Disco teleports both of them and the acid to Gyro's location. Despite this, the attack fails. The next attack falters as well. 
Gyro explains that the spin on his balls are gathering air around them and refracting the light, thusly creating a lens to distort Disco's perspective. After not getting any useful information about Johnny, Gyro knocks out Disco. Gyro then finds the gutter that Jojo escaped through. Gyro asks some kids at the park about Dio. Some claim that he shot Johnny, while others say it was Wikipipo. An artist then steps in and tells Gyro that it was actually President Valentine who shot Johnny. Gyro is profoundly confused, but remains confident that he'll find Johnny and the corpse parts. Just then, Dio approaches Wikipipo. Johnny Joestar is better left alive, says Dio. I thought you and Magenta got along. Well, hmm. Nevertheless, this is all according to plan, right? A flashback details the life of Jesus Christ. After his crucifixion and subsequent resurrection, Jesus told Joseph of Arimathea that he will go east. Jesus drew Joseph a map and said, everything is circular if it rotates. When Jesus reached east, he built a ship to reach a new land where he would live out the rest of his days. His corpse eventually tore into nine pieces and spread across the land. A young soldier, Funny Valentine, found the heart by chance, making it his mission to collect the other parts. Back in the present, it's eight minutes before Jojo got shot. Weaka People wonders who he should ally with. Weaka People finds a revolver on the ground. A man behind the US flag attacks, but Weaka People goes for the gun and fires several shots. However, the person he shot was Johnny Joestar. What? Impossible! Jojo escapes and the two girls spot Weeka Pipo with the gun. Dio confronts Weeka Pipo like earlier. We then go back eight minutes again, this time with Dio's perspective. After stealing a soldier's uniform, Dio infiltrates Independence Hall. Valentine walks alone and Dio considers killing him right here and now. Valentine walks by Dio and goes outside. Dio then sees Lucy being carted away as he decides he needs to kill the president as soon as possible. Without knowing the president's stand ability, Dio plans on using Weeka Pipo. Dio watches him from a building as Weeka Pipo shoots up at him. Dio falls down, but in the confusion, goes for the gun and kills Weeka Pipo. Or so he thought, it was actually Johnny Joestar once again. After retreating, he remarks that the president sent his present and that he lured Dio here to kill Johnny. Dio says that he shot Johnny, but it wasn't really him. It was Valentine with the use of his stand. Dio sends his raptors to track Valentine, but they're immediately killed. Weak people wonders how they both could have shot Johnny. The two agree to team up as Valentine begins his aerial assault. Weak people throws his ball, but a hole appears on Valentine's face. Dirty deeds done dirt cheap, also known as D4C. Dio throttles the president's neck but he disappears, re-emerging on Dio's back. Dio and Wicked People combine their attacks against Valentine, yet he hides within the flag. Valentine then traps Dio within the flag and begins extracting the eyeball. Valentine explains that through his ability, D4C, he's allowed to travel through neighboring worlds. Just then, Dio's body begins to crumble in the presence of an identical version of himself. We go back in time eight minutes once more this time with Valentine's perspective. President Valentine hides within the US flag. He then comes out of Gyro's horse and shoots Johnny in the face. This is the image that the artist saw. And thusly, through his stand ability, dirty deeds done dirt cheap, President Valentine can allow neighboring worlds to exist simultaneously in the same location. Dio, no person can exist as two of the same person in the same world except for me with my stand ability. The alternate version of Dio is badly hurt as Valentine takes the corpse's eye. Jojo shoots Valentine through the neck with his nails. It turns out that Dio's dinosaurs help bring back Jojo to this location. Jojo kills the alternate Valentine, but the original escapes with the eye. The alternate Dio dies, but the one in the flag pulls Wika Pipo in, saying he knows how to return to their world. The portal to the original world opens up, but with the two Wika Peoples existing at the same time, they merge and perish. You have my thanks. Goodbye, Wika Peepo. Dio deduces that Valentine can switch his wounded self 
with a healthy self in a neighboring world. What's more, it appears only one corpse exists, without a duplicate in a neighboring world. Thus, this world is where everything is based. Lucy wakes up to a voice that tells her to cut. Lucy then sees Stephen in the next room badly injured. She attempts to escape, but the president's henchmen close in. They begin injecting medication as Lucy is told to cut by the cryptic voice. Lucy attempts to cut the guards with her solidified tears, but fails. However, a series of odd events begin to manifest, making the soldiers and henchmen look rather ridiculous, thus allowing Lucy to escape. Lucy wonders, however, who is talking to her. Meanwhile, Gyro finds Johnny within the sewer. Jojo reveals the president's ability, and that weak people is dead. Gyro says with the corpse in the president's possession, it's time for them to abandon their mission of collecting the parts. Hey Gyro, my legs moved before. Johnny is desperate to retrieve the corpse and walk again. Gyro tells Johnny the importance of stirrups on a horse. And if he can harness the power from the horse, he might be able to defeat Valentine. To find the president, the two decide to find Lucy Steele first. Meanwhile, through another series of fortuitous events, Lucy attains a carriage that takes her and Stephen to the Delaware River. Once you go to the river, look for a ship, says the voice. Valentine watches in real time, thanks to the eyes. It is also revealed that Valentine was the voice guiding Lucy this whole time. The corpse favors me, Valentine. The president greets Lucy on the boat, saying they are heading to the last location on the map of Joseph of Arimathea. Valentine agrees to treat Stephen's wounds, but Lucy determines that he's a big liar. Valentine then subdues Lucy, advising her to surrender to the flow that will bring her happiness. The president then states, As a man standing before the holy corpse, I absolutely will not kill Stephen Steele. Dio continues tracking down Valentine's scent. Hot Pants ambushes Dio with her cream starter. Dio, I have business with you. Hot Pants suffocates Dio, but he retaliates by kissing her, which ends up choking her. The two reach a deal, in which Hot Pants will take the corpse from Valentine, and Dio will obtain the president's assets and political power. Also, she says Dario, his father, is still alive, and she can tell him his location. Gyro and Johnny enter the chase. Dio's dinosaurs track Lucy's scent, leading them to a train in which they see Valentine. Just then, they see alternate versions of themselves fall out of the train. Some strange things begin occurring to Lucy. What? Something... something is rising up in my body! Am I going to turn into the corpse? In an alternate world, Dio and Hot Pants board the train. Valentine from the based world knocks them out and takes them to his world. Hence, now we know why they were thrown off the train. Dio throws his bills at the alternate version, causing them to fuse and hurt the alternate Dio. Dio runs for the train as Dio chases him down. The two Hot Pants blind each other with their spray. The two then both grab the spray at the same time, causing their hands to disintegrate. The two Hot Pants then run for the train as the two parties are right next to each other. Dio slams the door on the alternate versions, sending them back to their world. Dio explains that if they're ever in the wrong world, they need to be caught between something to send them back. It's revealed that Hot Pants and Dio both desire the corpse for different reasons. Valentine realizes that Lucy is the head of the corpse as Dio comes lunging in with great ferocity. Dio injures Valentine's face and then yells, I'll cut you open and scoop out your innards. Hot Pants cuts off Valentine's exit as Dio looks for the fatal blow. After cutting the president's neck, a pitcher of water pours over Valentine, allowing him to transport his body to another world. Hot Pants is then knocked down as three Valentines emerge. Despite the odds, Dio engages with the three Valentines. Hot Pants then disguises Dio as another Valentine with her meat spray, which confuses everyone. Amidst the chaos, Dio executes two of the Valentines instantly, chasing down the final one. The two jump out the window, as Dio feels confident that he'll emerge victorious. Dio gashes the president in rage, splitting his body open. Valentine's hair gets stuck between the train, allowing him to transport Dio's body under the train. 
splitting his upper half from his torso. Dio is dead, says Johnny. Johnny and Gyro need to decide how they'll proceed from here. Gyro says they should reveal secrets about one another. He starts by saying that his real name is Julius Caesar Zeppeli. Johnny replies in turn, saying he has a fetish for girl's skin when it gets bitten by a mosquito. The two decide to board the train and save Lucy. We then see when Valentine transferred his ability to another version of himself, allowing for a new base Valentine. Johnny and Gyro see the Atlantic Ocean, as a caution bear sign continues to follow them. Johnny continues destroying the sign, but it keeps returning. Fish from a nearby pond begin attacking, biting Gyro on the finger. Not hurt though, the two decide to approach the engineer operating the train. However, the warning sign is still following them. Hot Pants sees Lucy with all nine parts, transformed into the corpse itself. The room undergoes spatial distortion due to the corpse's influence. Valentine enters the room as flies and spiders invade Hot Pants' body. D4C knocks Hot Pants into a window, causing the glass and wood to enter her body, which eventually kills her. Valentine understands that everything is converging into Lucy. Valentine now realizes that he can enter gaps in space at will. The corpse has drawn out its ability. D4C has progressed to a higher level. Gyro and Johnny enter the train, seeing the conductor in an odd state. The conductor claims that if he lets go of the handle, he'll go inside, meet his double, and be destroyed. The man begs Gyro for help, and Gyro says that if he defeats the president, he'll be saved. Valentine sees Johnny. So you've caught up with me? Jojo begins his assault, as Valentine uses Lucy as a shield. Johnny's holes begin chasing the president. He attempts to transport them to another dimension, but they are immune to his ability. Jojo hits Valentine in the hands again, but he places his hands in the gaps in space, transporting his wounds to some nearby farmers. The wounds on my hands were… sent away? She's a goddess! Lucy Steele! Lucy is drawing good fortune towards her and sending misfortune away. I have taken the first napkin, exalts Valentine. The fish wound on Gyro's arm begins moving up, ejecting blood from his neck. Valentine exits the train within the gap in space. Johnny's nail shots are deflected from the president, sending them to some distant land. Jojo attempts to evade him, but Valentine closes the distance. Gyro's ball stops D4C's attack as Jojo's shot is transported once again. D4C cuts Gyro as the president confronts Johnny head on. While nearly getting hit, Jojo manages to detach the train, which forces Valentine to return since he can't go too far from Lucy. The wound travels up to Gyro's neck once more. Jojo laments their situation, claiming, He's justice! I am, I am, justice! And we're the ones who are evil! Gyro grabs his steel ball from earlier, finding the hairs of Valentine on it. Gyro says that the rotation existed to bypass the armor and shield of knights, and it's possible that it can bypass Valentine's defenses as well. Gyro urges Johnny to harness the power of the golden rectangle by having his horse run with that form. Valentine is surprised that the two are approaching the train, readying themselves for a second fight. Lucy will soon die and be replaced by a goddess. Valentine leaps from the train as the two horsemen charge in. Valentine enters a rift of light to hide beneath the tracks. Johnny shoots Valentine to keep him at bay, yet Gyro implores him to wait for his horse to make the golden rectangle. Trees converge on Jojo's location as Gyro yells, Now Johnny! The form is complete! Unfortunately, a tree branch knocks him off his balance, allowing D4C to cut his left hand. A narrator explains that the power of gravity aids Valentine and D4C in moving between different dimensions. Therefore, the method to defeat the two is through the power of gravity. D4C pins Johnny down as Gyro's ball is rendered ineffective by the gaps in space. Valentine looks for the fatal blow as the light is pulled toward the train, making him think that Lucy is moving. Steven removes Lucy's body from the train, asking Gyro to take her far away so that she doesn't become the corpse and die. Gyro and Valentine both race towards Lucy's body, with Gyro reaching it first. Valentine exits the light and pins Steven against the train. A strong country begins with taking the napkin, and for that end, the goddess is necessary. That corpse's power is necessary for peace, and you are hindering that! 
The Atlantic Ocean begins closing in on Gyro as he moves towards it. Johnny absorbs the moving wound inside his body by shooting himself with his nails. He then picks up Gyro's ball, finding Valentine's ear stuck to it. As Valentine gives chase to Gyro, Johnny says that, quote-unquote, something has made the president not notice his missing ear. The ocean begins flooding the land, only stopping around Lucy. At this place, at the water's edge, I'll settle things with Valentine. Gyro thinks of a plan involving using the water to his advantage to defeat Valentine. Valentine, however, wonders why Gyro would intentionally trap himself, since his steel balls will have no effect on him. Gyro and Valentine then stare each other down, getting themselves ready for the final battle. Valentine finally notices his missing ear. What? What is this? Could it be? As Gyro rushes in, Johnny says that this time will be different if Valentine has noticed his missing ear. Jojo desperately wants to warn Gyro before it's too late. Valentine realizes that the power from Gyro's ball comes from his horse, as the two prepare to engage each other once again. Valentine disappears within the ocean, entering another dimension. Gyro! The president already knows! He knows about the rotation! Two Valentines appear in the water, forcing Gyro to choose which one to kill. However, there's a third Valentine behind him that a fissure of light in Lucy's skin is pointing toward. This is the one that Gyro attacks. A stand born out of the golden spin, Ball Breaker, begins inflicting pain upon Valentine, causing him to rapidly age. You did it! The golden rotation! It exploded! Gyro grabs his steel ball to defeat the other two Valentines. We won! Despite all this, however, Valentine then rises up with D4C, as Gyro notices blood coming from his left hand. Valentine looks to be in terrible shape. The bullet wound is heading towards Gyro's heart, as the steel ball user informs Johnny of his fifth lesson. The shortest route was a detour. Gyro rushes in, throwing his ball at Valentine. The president avoids the hit, but D4C's horns are sliced off. Since the steel ball passed over the fissure of light, it diverted some of its power elsewhere, reducing its effectiveness. She does exist! A goddess that became my ally! The steel ball flies back towards Gyro, causing catastrophic damage. Gyro collapses to the ground thereafter. Uh, 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 uh. And next is you, Johnny Joestar. Valentine fires multiple bullets in Gyro's body. Ah! Valentine diverts the shots, as Johnny realizes he needs to harness the horse's power. Jojo shoots again, but Valentine disappears within the water. He then re-emerges and knocks Johnny off his horse. Valentine then pontificates about the napkin once more as Jojo wonders about Gyro's fifth lesson. Valentine dares Johnny to fire his last nail bullet. What will happen now is a sacrifice. You, Johnny Joestar. Johnny grabs Gyro's steel ball, throwing it into the horse's hind leg. The horse kicks him into the air, unlocking a new transformation in his stand. Tusk, Act 4. Despite hiding within the light, Johnny's stand inflicts severe damage. Tusk, Act 4 then pries open the barrier of light with his rotational energy. A new power. This is Johnny Joestar's stand. Upon entering the light, Tusk Act 4 beats D4C to a pulp. Underground? Can't breathe? What? Where am I? Search! D4C! Find me! Before dying, he transfers D4C to another Valentine, who heads back to the root world. Unfortunately for him, he and D4C head back underground. Valentine's body is spontaneously rotating thanks to the after effect of Johnny's spin. Valentine transfers D4C to another version of himself, yet he heads straight underground once again. The damage from Johnny Joestar! It can't be! It's following you! No matter what I do, I end up back in a hole! Each individual pore, each cell of my body! Despite his cyclical sequence of deaths, Valentine remains steadfast in killing Johnny. God damn it! I'm being pulled back into the hole! 
Valentine eventually reaches a timeline where he enters a carriage, thinking he's escaped being buried alive. The rotation is ended! Johnny's rotation sends the president back to the earth. <laughs> Impossible! What kind of energy is this? Th this rotation! Could this be infinity? We then go back in time, when Valentine would meet his future father-in-law. Captain Valentine presented the child with a handkerchief, with the date of September 20th, 1847, from a soldier that was tortured. The soldier prisoner kept the handkerchief hidden within his eye, since it reminded him of his family. And in all the time that he was tortured, the enemy never found it. His beloved child's birthday, it was your father. I'm proud to have been your father's friend. Here, the handkerchief belongs to you. In the now, Valentine balls up the handkerchief in rage. Jojo's nails grow back as Lucy approaches him. Valentine appears once more. My complete defeat. I can no longer win. You are the victor. Valentine, in desperation, offers to bring another version of Gyro to this dimension for Johnny. Valentine urges Johnny to consider the deal, yet Jojo is in no mood to hear him out. The corpse manifests from Lucy's body. Valentine promises he'll bring Gyro Zeppeli back from another world, as long as Johnny stops the infinite rotation. Johnny is hesitant, but his desire to see Gyro alive again is too strong. Valentine then says, My actions were not done out of selfish desire. I have feelings of patriotism. Valentine goes on to explain that he saw prosperity for the country above all else, and that the steel ball run was the most peaceful means of obtaining that prosperity, through collecting the corpse parts. Still unconvinced, Johnny asks the president to prove his righteousness here and now. Valentine throws hot pants a spray towards Johnny, saying he can save Lucy, his left hand, and his beloved horse. Valentine states that he spared Stephen's life because of a promise he made to Lucy. He then pulls out his father's handkerchief, swearing he won't take revenge on Johnny. Johnny mulls over the proposition, considering the possibility of Valentine's righteous pass. As a final test, however, Jojo throws Valentine the gun that he used to shoot Gyro, telling him to pick it up. If nothing happens, everything will be able to come to an end and I'll be able to believe you 101%. Just try picking it up, President Valentine. Valentine gets closer, but pulls a second gun from the back of his pants. It fuses with the gun on the ground as the two shoot each other. They continue firing off rounds. In a near-death state, Jojo sees Gyro's spirit, as the steel ball user tells him to take care. Johnny lands the critical blow as the president's body descends into the dirt, once and for all. Jojo screams in agony with the corpse completely separating from Lucy's body. Johnny wraps up the corpse, with Steven embracing Lucy, who seems completely healed at this point. Jojo says that Valentine is dead and won't be coming back. The competitors for the steel ball run come racing through, as the closing ceremony is quickly nearing. All of a sudden, Jojo notices that the corpse disappeared. Johnny thinks it was stolen, considering the horse tracks in the mud. Steven says a shelter was constructed to house the corpse in New York, which coincides with the finishing location in the Steel Ball Run. Onlookers celebrate the finality of the great race. Johnny follows the prince, identifying a man behind a chain link fence. The chase continues, but the horseman transports himself behind Johnny's location. Steven determines from the horse prince that the unknown thief is from another dimension. Johnny finally determines who the thief is, and it is none other. But it was I, Dio! Then Diego Brando. Dio throws a barrage of knives at Johnny. The two dodge each other's attacks. Dio then recounts how Valentine came to his universe to convince him to recover the corpse in his place. Though Valentine didn't trust Dio, he much prefers him controlling the corpse over Johnny. Dio explains that his stand, the world, permits him to stop time for five seconds. Dio unhorses Johnny with his ability in real time and rides off. Johnny wonders how Dio could still be alive when he saw him dead. He determines it's Valentine's doing once again. Johnny comes in fifth place in the A stage, with Poco Loco winning. Additionally, the prize money has been increased to $60 million for the overall winner, with an additional $10 million for the winner of Stage 9. Johnny enters a boat heading to Coney Island, just like all the other racers. Jojo thinks of a method in which he can defeat Dio, 
Upon exiting the boat, he stares at his father in the crowd, who's holding Nicholas's boots. Tears come to Johnny's eyes as he rides off into the race. George, Johnny's father, publicly apologizes for his mistakes in raising his son. While chasing Dio, Jojo runs into an alley with a wire trap, knocking him off of his horse. Johnny fires a shot and transports his hand via a hole to Dio's location. Dio activates the world, yet Tusk Act 4 continues the pursuit. Dio then determines that Johnny's rotation controls gravity, permitting it to move freely through stop time. The stand returns to Johnny as Dio realizes this will be his greatest test yet. Steven says the guards are now searching for the missing president, as they hope Johnny can recover the corpse from Dio. Meanwhile, Dio throws a gallon of gasoline on Johnny and immediately lights a box of matches. And now the fun begins. It's my victory. This corpse belongs to me. Johnny bursts into flames. Tusk Act 4 spreads onto the ground, opening up an entry into the sewer so Johnny can extinguish the fire. While riding in the sewers, Johnny prepares himself to eliminate Dio by listening to the footsteps of his horse. There! Female fans embrace Dio, which he uses as a shield against Johnny's stand. Johnny exits the sewer, attempting to close the distance. The two horsemen put distance between themselves and the rest of the field. Johnny deduces that Dio can only stop time for about five seconds. Come, Johnny Joestar! The conclusion will come faster than if time were stopped. Johnny fires his nail bullet as Dio stops time. Within the five seconds, Dio avoids the blast and lines up a shot with his gun. Johnny manages to swivel on his horse to fire a shot against the world, but Dio's bullet hits him square in the neck. While falling from his horse, Jojo fires erratic nail bullets in every direction. Dio approaches. Your infinite rotation is no longer active because you can't use the horse's power. Johnny's stand, through the moving bullet holes, then subsumes the world's leg. But he lops it off in desperation as Dio screams in agony. Dio sends the world's leg towards Johnny, and since it still has the infinite rotation, it begins slicing his entire body. We then find out that this plan was concocted by Valentine himself, so that Johnny would be defeated by his own ability. Dio rides off, with Johnny's body experiencing the after effects of the spin. Jojo attempts to mount his horse, but it's no use. Diego Brando is dubbed the champion of the steel ball run, as he crosses the line first. Dio then follows the late president's instructions of finding the underground shelter that is impervious to any stand user, so that he can store the corpse for safekeeping. The corpse will remain in the vault, yet with Dio being its owner, it will be an ally to him. Dio must thusly take the napkin in Valentine's steed. All good luck and the center of the world will be at that place. The corpse will exist deep below the Earth's surface, and it will take 80 years before they can breach the underground shelter's defenses. Johnny can do nothing more than wait for his eventual disintegration into bits of dust. Dio looks to lock the safe, but surprisingly, Lucy Steele comes down the staircase. The world pins her against the wall as Dio checks the corner. Dio plans to kill Steven when this is all said and done. Lucy proclaims that the corpse is not his possession. The girl then presents Dio with a gift, per se. The horseman sweats all over his body when he realizes it's the head of the original Diego Brando. The world! Get away! Stop time! How dare you do something like this to me! I won't let you live! Dio's deceased head then merges with the parallel Dio, killing him in front of Lucy. Steven pulls Johnny onto his horse as the boy prepares to fire a reverse rotation to undo the effects on his body. Johnny reminisces once more about the journey with Gyro. Because Dio could not be found with his registered horse, he was henceforth disqualified from the steel ball run, and Poco Loco ended up winning by default. After news broke that the president was dead, people in the country and all around the world heaped him with praise. The final results for the steel ball run were as follows. The corpse is now locked within the shelter, where no one can touch or own it. Johnny boards a ship with the aid of a walking stick. Jojo plans on bringing the corpse of Gyro back to his homeland, where he will bring it to his family. The staff members attempt to remove the crate, where Gyro is being kept, but Jojo prevents this with his spin. Johnny breathes in the ocean air as he thinks about the time he spent with Gyro Zeppoli. Let's go home. Years later, the Kingdom of Naples had a revolution, displacing the monarchy. 
Henceforth, the new government granted Marco an amnesty. However, he would later die of a cold. The Zeppoli family set up roots in a new country thereafter, but no one knows where they went. And with this, it officially ends the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 7 Steel Ball Run. Now fear not, because this same universe is used in JoJo Part 8, Jojolian. Which, if you're a fan of the series, you know that the 10-year run is officially ending this August 19th, 2021, with the last chapter. So if you're not caught up, and you want to binge Hirohiko Araki's next installment before the final chapter is released, now's your chance. Now in terms of my next timeline video, I have Gantz next up on the docket. However, if this video hits 100,000 views by August 19th, when the last chapter of Part 8 is released, I will put Gantz on hold and do JoJo Part 8 timeline first. So, if you want me to do JoJo Part 8 first, share this video with as many people as you possibly can, get it to 100,000, and that will be the next timeline video for you guys. Eventually though, both timelines will be done, but in this way, you can control destiny. And with that said guys, if you guys enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing, hit the like button, leave a comment, and if you want to donate some money, I got a Patreon page, I always appreciate that as well. But the biggest thanks you can give me is by watching this video, and the fact that you're here right now at the end means that you did. So thank you very much, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.